Hello everyone, welcome aboard Good Tidings. We're currently in Honfleur in northern France and uh, I said I'd do a video on how to plan our routes, uh, how we do it and so this is what that's going to be. Now our techniques may ruffle a few feathers simply because we don't use the all-important recommended paper charts. Now I know everyone says you should have paper charts, detailed paper charts. But we don't use them because for one thing it's about 20 or 30 pounds for a paper chart of an area and we might be past that area in a week. Now for us that's a very expensive investment and we've been doing fine as we are. I know that might annoy some people. I know I've met a couple of old salts in the harbours and they've said when they found out that we didn't have any paper charts they almost had an art there. They almost had an art there. They almost had an art. Why can't I say that? What do you want to say? They almost had an a heart attack. They almost had a heart attack to think, what on earth were we doing, travelling around the UK with no charts? Well, what we use is Navionics on our iPad. Now, people always say, don't they, if, what, what happens if the electronics fail? Well, we have two huge power banks and we have this iPad. Now, if this iPad fails, we also have the subscription on our phones. So we've got two extra phones where we can run Navionics. So it would take a lot for all three devices to fail. So that's what we use. And this is what we use most of the time and this is how we plan our routes. This is our paper charts, but that's not all the information that we need to plan a route. You can't simply just plot from one place to another. There's so many, so many different things that you need to take into account, such as tides, such as weather, such as many, many other things which need to come together to make a successful route. One thing that we have on board is an out-of-date almanac, which is very useful even though Half of it's completely useless because that's the tides from 2016. So all that bit of the book is completely useless to us. However, there's still this part which has loads of information, safety information, uh, what all the cardinals uh, marks mean, safety information, navigation, weather, um, and that's for the south coast of the UK and France. So I refer to that uh, to get information on uh, Coast Guard stations, radio frequencies um, and the radio frequencies of each harbour and what they monitor and use. The most important thing other than the Navionics and the digital charts are these pilot books that we use. So if you've cruised around the south of the UK you'll know the Shell Channel pilot um, written by Tom Cunliffe who is a legend around these parts so these are good they have anchorages harbours harbour facilities this is from the year 2000 so it's a little bit out of date but still very relevant for navigating the uh, dangers and the main things and it will have all the main harbours however they do not go into as much detail as these kind of more, I don't know if you would call them more independent. These are written by the locals who have sailed the areas for many, many years, so they know everything. So this one for the Pembrokeshire coastline, we had access to so many different anchorages that were not in a book like this, for example. So this had all the ones that this had, however this had maybe twice as many more added an extra ones so if you're cruising in an area always better to get a uh, a, comp a more comprehensive guide than the roundabout pilot books like this they are most of the resources that we use we also use the internet so um, we use the internet to get tide times and we also I also use ybw.com to have a little look on the forums. Now, this is not always a good idea and it is always a fight or there is always 
or as they say, it always turns into a pissing contest. So, one guy has a completely different idea to the other guy, and there's a lot of negativity, and it seems like there's a lot of sea-fearing people on the forums who don't really get out on the boats too much, and their advice is completely useless. However, if you can always seek local advice, this is the only advice to take. So, how do we go from A to B? Rather than the paper chart, I write a little diagram. So, this is, for example, the south coast. Um, yeah. Can I see? No? Yeah. You can't see the book? Yeah, it's all blank white. Really? Yeah. Alright, so this is the trip from Weymouth down to Cherbourg. So I always draw like a rough uh, estimate of the land, right? So first our usual cruising speed is only about four knots, which isn't that much, but we do have a slow boat. Um, we work out the distance, the time that it should take, the departure time and the arrival time. So when you're crossing a channel, you need to take into account the tidal I don't even know what you call it, the tidal flow. The thing that pushes you this way and this way. So for six hours obviously it's going to push you one way and then another six hours it's going to push you the other way. So you need to work out a course to steer. So I plotted out how fast the tide was running at each hour and in which direction and then worked out, for example here, it's going to be pushing us that way at that speed for that time. So by this time, or by this distance, I'll be out here, but it's not a problem because the tide at this point is going to push you back, and then at here is going to start pushing you back. This line is not actually accurate in any way, it's just a kind of visual representation of what happened. However, this was the plan, and it was really good for peace of mind to have this. However, it didn't work out like this. Uh, because we went way faster than the four knots, we went about five knots average. At one point we were going seven knots, which is probably a new record for this boat. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've done this before, you understand it all. It's not a very comprehensive thing, but it's just a little view on how we plan our trips. These are the... These are the little diagrams that I draw and the tides and just the useful information. So I did it, that's Portland Bill and then around here we have the south coast of England. I just write the mileage, I just wrote the, the mileage here, how far it was uh, approximately and in how many days we could do it. And that's Nadiana's Chinese. And I'm sure there's a few others in here. Yeah, that's the north coast of France as well, so from Cherbourg to Saint-Vast and then Ken and then where we are now, Honfleur. Now Diana's just watching the storm outside. How is it? It's very crazy. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. The video's not been very planned out, I didn't write any kind of script or anything. I just got the resources that we use and a little brief overview of the last channel crossing. So, if you like the video, like it, and please give us some suggestions how we can improve, and also let us know how you do it and uh, what things have really helped you to plan efficiently, quickly, and uh, that have just made your sales much, much nicer. Also, um, if you want to head to our coffee page, you can support us if you enjoy this kind of content. We don't use the money for any kind of luxury. We have a very simple life. We don't want too many, too many things. And we realise that if only 10% of the people who watch the videos just supported us through coffee every month, then uh, we could be going for a long, long time. Uh, most of our money outgoings are spent on marinas so we can get power and Wi-Fi so we can upload these videos twice a week. So thank you to everyone already. We already have some amazing coffee donators. We posted this on the YouTube a while ago. You guys, you guys are absolutely amazing. So if you want to be like these guys, head to our coffee page and buy us a coffee. See you on the next video.